Today we're going to knit a classic style of scarf, often referred to as a bow tie scarf, using any standard gauge knitting machine that has two fully functional beds. I'll be demonstrating on a Superba, but any machine that can achieve both half and full fisherman's rib may be used. The mannequin is also wearing the sizzle top, and there will be a link to the video series where you can knit that top as a free pattern in the program notes. First, a little background. This style of scarf has been around at least since the 40s or 50s, and a friend in the Superba group recently asked, could we knit it on our machines? The answer is basically yes, but you probably wouldn't want to because the hand knitting pattern relies on garter stitch, which is really easy by hand, but laborious on the machine. The knot section is knit one purl one ribbing usually, and the petal shape of the tails is made with increases and decreases. The great thing about garter stitch is it is a completely non-rolling reversible fabric, but we can make some of those on the knitting machine. So here's what we're going to do. We'll take advantage of the natural width variation of various double bed stitches, starting out with knit one purl one rib, then a brief section of half fisherman's rib, which is wider, full fisherman's rib, which is the widest stitch the machine can make, back to ribbing for the knot, and the part that actually goes around the neck is half fisherman's rib. These are very thick for standard gauge fabrics, so the scarf is very warm. Full fisherman's rib is completely reversible. Half fisherman's rib looks nice on both sides, but not identical. We'll use 41 needles for the entire project, knit in this direction, beginning and ending on waist yarn. And although we don't change our needle count, the shape we get is this one. The middle section is the part that goes around the neck, and you can see it's not to scale. It's three or four times that long proportionately. The key down the right shows the stitches used. One by one means every other needle ribbing, HFR, half fisherman's rib, FFR, full fisherman's rib, and we toggle between them to create the shape. The written version of this pattern has been added to the keyhole scarf collection. Those who've already purchased it have also received a note already saying they can download the additional pattern and going forward, anybody who buys the book will get this design along with all the others. A link to this book and any other books or videos I mention will be in the program notes so you can locate them if you need them. Let's go over the settings. On a Superba, this is the stockinette key. When we engage both the tuck and the circular button, we cause that bed to tuck every needle on one row and knit every needle on the next row. For this pattern, the half fisherman's rib portions will have that setting selected on the back bed only and leave the front bed on the stockinette setting, upside down arrow. When we choose to go to full fisherman's rib, we'll engage the setting on the front bed as well. When we do that, one bed will tuck every needle going one direction knit it the other, and they will take turns. To return to normal rib, we engage the stockinette key. I do have other videos to help you if you have a different kind of machine, figure out how to get regular ribbing, full, and half fisherman's ribbing. The written pattern also has a chart of common settings for different makes of machine. We need 21 needles and work on the back bed spaced at intervals of every other needle. Beds are racked so that the needles will alternate perfectly, and there will be 20 needles in work on the front bed with them situated in the gaps left by the out-of-work needles on the back bed. What you're looking at here is an improvised cast-on because my cast-on wires are wearing out. We're all going to cast-on and waste yarn, and you may use whatever method you like to get going in the one-by-one -one ribbing setup with waste yarn. This is just a little trick I've found. If I leave the improvised, not quite as good as original wire in position, because it's hard to get in and out, and manually knit the waste yarn right onto the comb through the tines on every other needle, let the comb drop down, hang weights on it, 
I can then bring the front bed needles into work and begin knitting ribbing. Not important to the project, just a workaround. Yarn, gauge, and fit. To get the Tweety effect, I ran a strand of number one weight yarn along with a thinner, hairier strand of miscellaneous yarn that gives this nice tweed. The total weight is a light number two sport weight yarn. I do believe the pattern will work with a plain old number one. You will just have a slightly less thick and robust fabric. The only really important feature of the fit is this section. We want it to be, for most women, 18 inches long. The average woman's neck circumference is actually only about 13 and a half inches, but we want it to lay, as you see, with the knot situated actually a bit below the neck. And for most of us, 18 works out about right. You can stretch a tape measure around the, around the intended wearer and estimate whether she is in fact so slender she would like it shorter or a little bit larger and would like it longer. And here's how to adjust it if you want to change it. The critical thing is our row gauge in half fisherman's rib. With my yarn combination, 220 rows of half fisherman's rib got me the 18 inches I wanted. If you wanted 19 instead of 18, do this. Multiply row gauge minus 12.22 rows per inch in half fisherman's rib by the desired length of the round the neck section, 19 inches. We come up with 232.18 rows. I think rounding to 232 would be just fine. And here's how to adjust if you don't get the identical row gauge. Suppose you used a slightly thinner yarn and you're getting 13.5 rows per inch in half fisherman's rib. You still multiply that times the desired length of the circumference around the neck and your result is 243 rows to get that length. The other features of the fit simply are not that critical, so you can just go with the main pattern, adjusting the row count in this area as needed. When using a hairy run along and a stitch that involves tucking, it's possible to have stitches partly hang up on the flow combs or using a Japanese machine on the gate pegs. The cure is usually extra weight hung on the edges of the fabric in particular. I found that the heavy forks, which you can learn how to make in my Cheap Tricks and Cool Tools book, did the job of stopping that nonsense perfectly. The extra weight pulls those hairy bits down out of harm's way. Okay, let's knit. You've changed to main yarn. Now knit eight plain, knit one purl one rows with both beds on plain stockinette settings. Now change to half fisherman's rib setting. Front or river bed stays on stockinette, back or main bed is set to tuck alternate rows. And we knit 12 rows on this setting. Back or main bed will tuck on alternate rows. Front bed will knit every row normally. Now change to full fisherman's rib setting. Back carriage stays as it is. Front carriage changes to full fisherman's rib settings. Knit 48 rows in full fisherman's rib. That brings us to here. To knit the skinny part that will go inside of the knot, resume stockinette settings and knit 16 rows of normal ribbing. Return to half fisherman's rib settings, and here is where we will knit the part that goes around the neck, probably 220 rows or your adjusted amount. We now want to knit another skinny part. This skinny part will create the knot, so it needs to be a little over three times as long as the first one. So return to stockinette settings on both beds and knit 50 rows. Having finished our 50 rows of knit one purl one or one by one ribbing, we simply reverse the steps we took at the beginning, knitting 48 rows of full fisherman's rib, 12 rows of half fisherman's rib, eight rows of one by one ribbing and scrap off. In other words, knit at least 10 rows in waist yarn and drop the work off of the machine. Thread the main yarn tail into a yarn needle 
run that yarn through the open stitches at the beginning and the ending of the main yarn fabric and then snip the waist yarn to pull it out and remove it. Threading through the stitches at the beginning and the ending will look a little bit different, but it's basically the same process. This is the beginning and this is threading through the final stitches at the end of the strip of knitting. The difference is mainly that the way the stitches appear to be oriented is a little bit different. At each end of the work, if you did not use a ravel cord, snip the row of waist yarn that adjoins the main yarn and slide it out, treating it like a ravel cord, and the fabric edge will come away clean. We haven't yet used the drawstring that we've inserted, but we're about to. Use it to draw the end in, leaving a circle opening just about big enough to stick a fingertip into. Stitch across the end of the O, leaving a little bit of space. Do it a couple of times so it's secure. Knot the yarn and bury the tail. We're going to use this opening to add the tassels, but it does not have to be tassels. Instead, it could be a jingle bell, a little snowman, a crocheted snowflake, anything you want. Next, we're going to take the long one of the skinny pieces of ribbing. See that how different they are. Pinch a fold into the one by one ribbed section. The proportions should be like this. Each side of the area above the join where we're going to seam should be one third of the total length of the one by one ribbed section. The piece of one by one ribbing that remains to either side of where we will position the seam should be one sixth of the total length of that ribbing. Seam the two layers together along the spot that fits the bill. This line of stitching creates the apparent knot that the other tail will slide through. It need not be anything fancy even a running stitch will do. It's not really going to show. It's just going to sew the layers together to create that slot. Once we have it sewn across, we flatten the loop of fabric that we have formed and stitch the bottom layer of the loop to the main fabric of the scarf where they align. Do not catch the top layer of the fabric. Do this on both ends of the loop of fabric. So we now have, in this one area, three layers of knitting, two of which are sewn together, and an opening, a tunnel, that goes straight through. You do not need to sew these areas together. It's the areas underneath the so-called knot that are sewn together. The second tail slides through from the top and emerges out the other side of the knot. It's a little bit of a tight fit sliding it through. Not really difficult, but I find that I don't actually have to take the second tail out of its slot between wearings. We have 18 inches around, our heads are 21 to 22, and the fabric will stretch that much. Now for the tassels. Wrap the main yarn around something about a foot long, 15 to 20 times. I made 18 wraps. Slide the bundle of yarn free of what it was wrapped around. Fold the bundle in half, pull the fold through the O that we made at the bottom of the scarf tail, and pull up a loop. Reach your fingers through the loop of yarn made at the fold and pull the ends through. Give it a little tug to set the knot and trim the end of the tassel evenly. Make tassels like this on both scarf tails. When inserting one scarf tail through the opening, the tunnel that we made, we're looking for the place where the half fisherman's rib changes to one by one ribbing. Pull the tail inside the tunnel just far enough that the one by one ribbing ends at the very top of the tunnel. I think of myself as accessory impaired so I love scarves like this because they stay where they belong and I don't have to remember them. However, I'd like to point out a safety note. I only make patterns like these in adult sizes because I think that they could pose a strangulation risk for children 
at play who got the scarf caught on something. I fear it might not come unfastened quickly enough. 